Hey gang, Shane Patrick White here and welcome to Beyond the Process. Today I want to share with you the first steps in becoming a better painter. Whether it's digital or traditional, it really doesn't matter. These are the foundation skills that everyone needs to succeed with color. If you've had problems with value or color temperature, I'm here to explain the basics of what you should know. Building on my last lesson on color mixing, I will take you through a few sample projects that will give you clear, concise direction. If that sounds good to you, sit back, relax, and enjoy the process. When it comes to understanding color, we need to start with how the human eye sees the world around us. Because of our instincts as hunter-gatherers over the course of thousands of years, this information kept us alive and safe from predators. Years ago, I learned from an army sniper that there are four things that the human eye perceives. These are also the basis for creating powerful images. In order of priority, they are silhouette or edge detection, which is determined by size and contrast, value or brightness, compares objects to their surroundings. Because our eyeball receptors are made up of rods and cones, the rods are sensitive to low light levels and the cones are sensitive to higher light levels. Movement of objects are detected by the brain from both eye and rapid eye movement that help update the visual scene. Color is the last thing we perceive, which is a combination of signals from different types of cones, red, green, and blue, and the brain's interpretation of those signals. Color perception is also influenced by the surrounding context, including value and saturation. As you can see, combining any of the above four examples can make for sharper and clearer images. These principles are crucial when it comes to creating still or moving pictures. When it comes to painting, whether digital or traditional, there are two things to keep in mind. Number one, we squint to see value. This is especially important when working in graphite or ink drawings, as there is no color to direct the eye. Tonal variation is easier to see as well as rhythm of line. Number two, conversely, we open our eyes to see color. This lets us compare color relationships to build harmonies. These two basics are key to painting from life. But when we're painting out of our heads, squinting is going to be your best friend throughout the entire process. Of course, any opportunity to do color studies, if there is time, will help you immensely when first learning the craft. Some painters are tonalist painters, like John Singer Sargent and Anders Zorn, who used a limited palette of about seven colors. Other painters are colorists, like Joaquin Soroya and Sergei Bongard, who used rich, bold colors and a palette of 12 or more colors. Personally, I prefer color and push myself toward a colorist palette in the tradition of Russian Impressionism, like Sergei Bongard. One is no better than the other, they're just different. Using a trial version of Rebel 7, in the following demo I want to simplify my approach to value and color by working in a monochromatic color scheme. This will help me show you how to adjust values and control saturation to help the eye focus where I want you to look. For the heck of it, I just make up something out of my head. A derelict gas station in the American Southwest. I want enough foreground, middle ground, and background to give myself the opportunity to create visual distance with not only shape and detail, but with value and color. I use the red palette that I created in my last video for continuity purposes. Normally I would lay in a spot of my darkest dark and my lightest light to be able to compare my other values throughout the scene. But in this case, however, I lay in a midtone and place my most saturated color where I want it to go. It's essentially the same thing, as I will compare the saturation to that one spot with everything else. In concept art especially, using a range of four to five values is plenty to get your ideas across. That doesn't always exist in nature when painting from life, but it helps you knock out more work under deadlines. 
I was shooting for an afternoon suncast of about 1 to 2 p.m. If you study the bravura paint strokes of the Russian Impressionists, you will see that they establish lighting early on in their block-in phase, so you can tell what time of day it is even before you realize what the subject matter looks like. I purposely painted this piece, zoomed out so I can evaluate the image better as I go. All too often, we zoom in too quick and start noodling on unimportant detail. Locking in solid values and color relationships are the big building blocks that lend themselves to refinement. Only then does it make sense to zoom in. I take the time to blur out the image to mimic squinting and see if my focal point makes sense and that my values read correctly. Next, I want to show you color temperature with warm and cool palettes. I'm choosing colors that will be obvious and not so obvious. The only thing that may make sense is that the warm colors are on the left and the cool colors are on the right. Using a simple rock shape and establishing my light source in the upper left should simplify things for this demo. I start with two purples close in value, one red shade and the other blue shade. Compared to colors like yellow or red, purple is a cool color. But within its hue, or color family, you can have warms and cools. For clarity, I add a darker shadow passage to help separate the two colors. Next, I'll use a cool lighting setup with the lighter, cooler blue. The darker blue is also warmer and will be the shadow this time. It's helpful to remember this adage, warm light, cool shadows, or cool light, warm shadows. Of course, there are some exceptions when handling these situations that I will cover in later videos. Now I want to show you how to deal with two very intense colors, this time using the cool light and warm shadow color scheme in the red family. Like the purple that was close in value, I grab a darker red to create a shadow line. So how does one determine between warm and cool colors? A lot depends on lighting choice. Even if you're wearing a cool blue shirt, a warm light will warm it up. A cooler light will cool it down and make the shadow sections warmer. It's obvious that red and blue are warm and cool, respectively. Their shadow line would most likely be a purple as the two mix to create that color. But when they're complementary, like green and red, they will either become a perfect gray neutral or they will lean toward the red side or the green side, depending on hue and saturation. This will make even more sense in videos to come, but for now, it should give you a great starting point to try it out for yourself. Good luck with your studies, and remember, have fun. Thanks again for joining me today. If you found any value in this, hit the like button. Better yet, subscribe or tell a friend. Until next time, thanks for watching.